raise your hand if you have ever been burned by a marketing agency that you have hired. If you're watching on YouTube, all of my hands are raised. This is an episode about best practices when hiring your first or your next marketing agency. Hiring people to help you with your business is akin to dating. How many frogs do you have to kiss until you find the one? I have a fun story I'm going to start you off before we jump we jump into this. So before I met my husband, I had been through a string of bad relationships and I think I was single like on and off for four years or so. I went through so many bad dates and so many kind of horror dating stories until I got to the point where I just gave up. I gave up. I was like, you know what? If this is what dating is going to be for the rest of my life, I don't want it and I'm going to be single. But guess what? That's when I showed up. The reason I tell that story is because there have been so many people, there are, is just kind of par for the course that when you embark on your e-commerce journey, you're going to hire some wrong people and you're going to learn from experience what not to do, who you value, what are some of the traits you value, and you're going to get better at screening people. But I have a question for you. Because you've been burned with marketing agencies, is that going to stop you from continuing to try to find the right marketing partner to solve the problem you have? No, because then you're either going to stay single the rest of your life or you may never figure it out and you just may pack up your business and leave. So this is an episode that after I've had, you know, one too many people come to me before hiring us saying like, I've been burned, why are you different? I want to take an unbiased approach to unpack some of the things that I recommend you look for in a marketing partner, even if you listening, we never end up working together um, because I think that there's a lot of bad marketing agencies out there and I think that there's a lot of great ones. And so here are five or six things that I want to have you consider, especially if you have not hired your first marketing agency. So very first thing I want to go through is experience and track record. So one common thing that I see when um, we get brands asking us for advice on uh, product photography and lifestyle images, and they're like, hey, we want to hire this photographer, or hey, here are some images our wedding photographer did. And the images are never great. So one thing that you absolutely want to see based on the type of freelancer or agency that you are hiring is you need to make sure that they are a specialist in the very thing that you are going to hire them to do. So if you're hiring someone for product photography for your Amazon listing, don't hire your wedding photographer because they're your best friend. They're not going to capture your product in the best light to convert on Amazon. You want to hire someone specifically to do Amazon product images. The same thing goes for marketing. You don't, if you're planning on hiring someone for meta ads, don't hire a TikTok specialist who's never touched meta ads in the past. Very, very different platforms. So you want to look for an agency that has proven experience in e-commerce marketing, especially D2C brands. And even better, if you can go more granular to an agency that works in your niche, then fantastic. Or if they work across multiple niches like we do, make sure that you look at their track record and see success across multiple niches. Just because someone has thrived in only selling supplements doesn't mean they can't also apply those same skills to sell yoga mats, okay? Next thing that we wanna look at is ex expertise in relevant platforms and technologies. So if you are in Klaviyo for your email marketing and you know that Klaviyo is the best email CRM for Shopify stores, not sponsored, um, but you have someone who's like, oh yeah, we're a MailChimp specialist. Do your research. Do not move your email marketing over to MailChimp because you think it's going to generate more revenue for you. Um, do your own research and make sure that what is being recommended to you actually aligns with expert tools that are recommended for exactly where you're at. Um, the other thing is that, um, again, going back to the, you know, the TikTok thing, like um, the more we learn about different kinds of marketing, we watch the platforms evolve, Google, TikTok, Meta, Pinterest, et cetera. Um, a jack of all trades is not going to manage 
marketing across all those channels like an expert. An expert is someone who knows all the nuances, the algorithm changes, and they're the ones that are going to really get you the best return when they are a specialist in that platform. So the other thing I want to say about this is that um, if you're an e-commerce brand that is scaling, you might not even know what the right options are for you. So you may end up taking quite a few calls with like um, YouTube ads agency, meta ad agency, SEO agencies, and and, you know, there's just a gamut of things you could spend your money on and invest in and different kinds of marketing strategies. You may not actually know what is the right thing for you based on where you're at in your budget and your business and your goals. So when you are on a call trying to kind of narrow down where your focus should be in the marketing side, ask the agency why they feel that that specific to like the SEO is relevant for you and where you are today. The right marketing agency is going to tell you, hopefully, the truth if they're like, hey, we're not a fit for you right now. You know, this is where we recommend to be in order for you to have like the right resources to really, you know, go all in on that platform. An example of, um, let's look at like SEO, for example. We don't do SEO, but we'll do SEO. Um, the difference between someone good and great at SEO is if I'm talking to someone about SEO and they're like, hey, so, you know, do you do content? Do you produce YouTube, blog, newsletters, etc.?" And I say, no, but this SEO person knows that you need a content engine to start ranking organically on Google the agency owner or freelancer who's just like, oh, well, I just need the client is not going to set proper expectations for what success really needs for SEO. So he's just going to say, that's not a problem. We, we can do some other small things and you're actually not going to end up driving good results. But the great SEO person is going to look at what you're doing and your content strategy and say like, okay, so you're not blogging, you're not posting videos, you're not doing anything that's really going to help us. Is this something you're open to? If so, you know, what kind of content, um, like ideally we, we want to see one to two posts a week come out on go like blogs, et cetera, right? So the difference between a, someone good and someone great is someone great that you want to partner with looks at this strategically and will set proper expectations for what you need to achieve your goals on that platform or with that strategy. Otherwise, if they don't and they're just like, oh great, I'll just give you a quote, they just need the money and they're not, they're more of a um, employee mindset versus strategic partner. And if you are someone looking to invest in real growth, you absolutely want to have someone who goes into the third thing we're looking for is strategic approach and creativity. So you can really understand how someone thinks and the kind of collaboration you're going to have with this agency or with this freelancer based on the real questions they're asking and the expectations they're setting. Again, big difference between, oh, let me just give you $1,000 a month for like, you know, working on some back end stuff and not setting proper expectations that you absolutely need to prioritize blogging if SEO is something that you want to be improving. Um, another thing is if we're going into like the meta ads arena, um, someone who is average versus great, the average person is going to say, oh, well, you only have like a $10 a day budget. That's fine. We can make that work. We can get you sales that way. When the experienced expert Facebook ads person is going to say, no, to be set up to scale, you need a conservative testing budget of three to $5,000 a month. And here's exactly what our testing process looks like and when we can expect a return on that. They teach you something. So there is a very big difference between, again, just contractor doing it to get paid and giving really no expert strategic direction versus the expert who is going to guide you to really capitalizing on certain platforms. So that's where the agency that um, we recommend you partner with is going to be someone that doesn't just do the marketing. They are a strategic partner to help guide you to make correct decisions for your brand. So in terms of strategic approaching uh, uh, creativity, you want to ask them questions about their process, about why they think this is the right channel, what needs to be uh, happened. 
Sorry, we were interrupted by someone trying to sell internet at the door. So where was I? So a good agency should not only be skilled in executing campaigns, but strategic planning and take it so far as measuring the exact result that you want to get through this agency, which brings me to point number four, which is analytics and reporting. So one of my big peeves with working with service providers is at the end of the month, they give you a report by email that has 10 pages of gibberish. It's a whole bunch of numbers and there's no real insight is into what the numbers mean or really taking an 80-20 approach to um, explaining what those numbers mean so that the business owner can really sift through the noise and only focus on the metrics that matter. If, boy, like if I want to see your eyes glaze over, I'm going to give you a 10-page report with a hundred different numbers on it that only three of them actually matter to your bottom line. So, with your analytics and reporting, there's a few things. You want to make sure that they're doing uh, regular reporting. So ideally once every two weeks or once a month, but is there a plan in place to communicate and review these reports to really understand the good, the bad, what are some of your um, biggest strategic um, advantages that you have that the data is telling you so that the business owner can really start to uh, so really you can understand, start to understand the numbers. And a lot of agencies might actually not be teaching you what the numbers mean or how to read data um, because that's part of what keeps them employed, right? Just saying, just saying. Um, so as an example, the uh, if you could be asking your agency, um, like, hey, well, what kind of analytics do you report on? Like, how often are we speaking? Like, do we review the account, et cetera? Um, the way that we handle all reporting is we do have a, um, a bi-weekly report as well as access to a scorecard that we've built. It's a profit scorecard so that we every week extract the most relevant high level performance metrics we need to spit out a number, which is how is your profitability doing? Are you profitable? What is your blended acquisition cost? And check out you know, a recent episode on um, why we do blended acquisition versus platform specific. Um, and we just give you a scorecard that distills a thousand numbers into the most relevant information for you across Amazon and Shopify to be able to understand actually how your business is doing. Um, that's another thing I actually didn't mention about like platform um, specific expertise is that um, in 2024, the way customers shop is how we need to learn to market to them. Omnichannel is the way forward. What I mean by that is if you're only focusing on Facebook ads, you're missing 50% of your opportunity right there. You want to have a strategy and work with someone who, and this is why I like agencies because agencies allow multiple talent and having mul multiple experts to focus on different um, channels. So when you hire a marketing agency that has a team behind them, they should have a Google ad specialist. They should have a meta specialist. They should have a specialist or someone designated to the very thing that you're hiring them for, for email marketing, outreach, PR, etc. So these are some things that an agency lets you have multiple expert talent versus a freelancer just trying to do everything. Um, and generally you're going to find better quality and better um, level of expertise with an agency because they essentially bring a marketing team as opposed to a freelancer that has expertise in like five different platforms, but they're not experts in those platforms, right? They may be able to get passable results, but to get world-class results, that's where you want to have an expert that specializes in that thing. And last but not least, client testimonials and references. So like most consumers online, no one is buying anything until they're reading the Amazon reviews or until they read reviews online or go through some of the content. So in terms of the agency and in terms of, um, or if it's a freelancer you're hiring, go through some of their content online. See if you resonate with their style, how they approach things, right? If they don't do content, that's fine go through some case studies, see, really understand, hey, are these uh, these transformations or like these results that they got, are those the kind of results that I want? And the so just vet them, go through Google reviews, go through Trustpilot. Um, good agencies should know how to sell themselves. So go through it that way. The bonus tip I wanna leave you with
The bonus tip I want to leave you with is get aligned on what success looks like. And this is, you know, this could be definitely part of your screening process as you're, you're asking the agency, like what kind of results can we expect together? When can we expect those? Um, and just having a very candid discussion around the kind of results you want, or maybe if you don't know, just point blank, say like, ask the agency owner when you're talking to them, like, what do you think we can do together? The last thing you want to do is not set performance goals or in your mind have an expectation that, oh, we're going to make, you know, we're going to hit five figures. We're going to hit seven figures together, but not actually communicate that expectation of what success looks like. The best agencies are ones that are able to understand exactly what your goals are and be able to measure week over week, month over month, how they are getting you to achieve that goal. And if not, if they cannot tangibly show, hey, effort in, output toward your goal, then it's likely not an expense that is going to align with helping you achieve the goals that you want. And you know what, maybe you don't even know what to expect because you're just getting started. Asking about what we think we can do together. One of the things that we do with the brands that we have, again, around the scorecard tool is that scorecard is also a goal setting exercise where at the very beginning of our engagement, what we do is we will outline performance goals from the profit, the margins, from the acquisition cost and um, overall like order volume. So we want to get on the same page with like, what does success look like at the end of our three months together or in 12 months? And then we want to make sure that we track the data and just like a race where if you signed up for a marathon, your running coach is going to map out your weekly training and distance milestones to set you up over the course of four months to be able to run 26.2 miles. So we approach scorecards and reporting and goal setting and strategy in the exact same way. And again, if we never work together, that's fine. But I believe that you need, as a business owner, need to have a goal around your vision and a strategic partner that is going to line up all actions to help get you to that goal and measure that out in terms of your reporting. That's our ethos. That's a little bit behind the scenes look with how we work with brands. And outside of that, I hope you do find this helpful because again, you've got to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince. Super bad analogy, but don't let one bad apple spoil your ability to get better and better at figuring out what you look for to find that right marketing partner and just get smart. You're listening to this episode, so I know you're already doing your research to learn what you don't know. Outside of that, Thanks for watching if you're on YouTube. Thank you for listening to the podcast and definitely check out launchandscale.co for a few resources that we have and uh, go from there. Anyway, talk soon.